everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we are working on page two. Let me verify that. Yes, we're on page two. Um, so this is gonna be fun. So we're gonna have a, a simple waterfall here on this page. Um, and I'm using, I'm color blocking some of my papers uh, because they weren't quite wide enough. So this is actually from the 8x8 collection pack and this is from the 12x12. It's just a strip from the 12x12 to cover the 10 inch span. Sorry, I've got a, a rogue magnet there. I've put slits into this paper so instead of having the hinge exposed, I'm gonna tuck it inside these slits and I'm gonna tell you how I did that in just a second. And I did something a little different. Um, typically I have a half inch hinge but these are one inch. So this is five by six. So five, sorry, five by six. Five by six, you're gonna score a half inch on the five inch side, so you have a finished four by six. You're gonna do four of those, okay? So once you get those cut and set aside, you're going to take your, um, your eight by eight panel, you're gonna trim an eighth of an inch off of it, and we're gonna keep it the full, I think I did that right. Yeah, the full eight inches. So you're only gonna take an eighth inch off the top, or, or if you like a larger border, whatever you like for the border. Um, for the slits, you're gonna come down a quarter, let me verify that, yeah. You're gonna come down a quarter of an inch from the top and create your first slit. Then you're gonna do an inch and then a slit, then an inch and a slit, and an inch and a slit. So you're gonna have a total of one, two, three, four slits in the page. The first one starts a quarter inch down and then every other one is one inch lower. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is add our, you need to do all of this before we install it on the page. You're gonna go ahead and add your waterfall pieces. So we're going to Push it through the slit, like so. And then I've already got tape on the inside. So normally when we're doing a waterfall, the tape goes on this side, it's gonna go on the inside. So I'm just sliding it in. Okay. I'm gonna remove my tape. And again, this is one inch hinge, which is unusual. So I just wanna keep repeating that to make sure you're getting that. And then I wanna make sure my score line is actually inside so it'll drop down freely. So you wanna be able to see your score line. Hmm. Easier said than done. I'm sticking to myself. You could also use glue here if you wanted. Okay. I think I've got it. Okay. Oh. That's not wanting to go. I'm gonna have to trim that. <clears throat> I don't like doing this, but it's better than tearing. There we go. Now, when I when I lay it down on this uh, on the the actual page, I'll make sure that that gets glued so that you can't. It's not obvious. Let me make sure it went in straight. You know, it doesn't look very straight. So now that I've just gone through, yeah, look how crooked it is. Now that I've just gone through this exercise, I know what I would do differently. I don't think I'd remove the tape until I got it positioned and then turn it over and put my tape in. So I am going to remove this and start over. Um, but let's go ahead and install the other ones because I think I can get these in without problem. And I'm gonna use some undo on there to um, release it. Okay, so slide it in. Oh, much easier. Slide it in with the, um, the tape backing still on it. Hold it securely. 
Now I would go in, now take off your tape. It's a little bit fussy. It's a little bit fussy, but I really like not having the hinge exposed. I'm just making sure it looks straight. When I say straight, I'm looking at this, the mark here. Yeah, so the other thing I realized is I did a really fat piece of tape and a really thin piece of tape. I would do it the other way around. Put the thin one next to the score line and the fat one on the outside. I think it would work better. Now I fussed around with it enough, I gotta check it one more time. There we go. Now for the, um, I have a duplicate page for that one, I'll make sure I put my tape on different. Okay, how's that look? Good. Okay, so like I said, it's a little fussy, but it's in. There we go. So make sure your score line is actually exposed and not on the back side of the seam. Easier said than done, but it, it is, you can do it. <laughs> it's possible. You just have to fuss around with it a little bit. Now with each placement, I'm, I'm checking to see that I've got a straight continuous line. Okay, before I press it into place, I wanna make sure my score line is actually here and it is and then we just push this slit right behind the score line and then it should operate freely okay and then all of this is going to stay in place once it's it's glued on top of the pocket page itself okay last one well except for the one I have to fix to make sure I was actually recording. I've already once today recorded and forgot to hit play. I thought I was recording. There's Nola. It looks crooked, but that's because this one is so far off. Okay, so that's done. So I'm gonna fix this one. I'm disappointed I did that. So I'm using Undo, and if you haven't heard of it, oh my gosh, it's a lifesaver. Um, it's gonna release my tape, it only works on tape. Um, and then when it dries, uh, I can reapply this hinge uh, without a problem. It won't do any damage to the paper. It dries as though it was never there in the first place. 
it's amazing. So once you put it on, you give it a moment and then you can lift it off. Then I'm gonna set those two pieces aside so that they can dry. You do need to have a spatula or something to delicately lift the edges. And so what I might do is, depending on how much undo got on the designer paper, I may just cut another um, waterfall so then I don't have to wait for it to dry. Okay, so now what it does, because I, I put the adhesive here, is it actually lifts the adhesive off the paper that it's on. So the adhesive actually remains. I'm just gonna fold it over, it's stretched a little. I don't want it to catch that little strip. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a fresh one so we don't have to wait for that one to dry. And the tape is still here so I can easily lay it down. Easily. Actually, not that easy, so I'm going to go ahead and put this here so I don't accidentally grab before I'm ready. Okay, so again, this is five by six. Not quite. Thought I might actually have a piece of scrap that was the right size, but it's not. One more time. on the top there. There we go. Okay, we'll go ahead and pull these out. Lay that down. There we go. All right, that's good. We did it. Now, here is page two. So this is going to go in just like this. Okay, and then we'll decorate these, um, decorate the waterfall. So we're gonna keep it closed with um, this tab. And this is a cut apart from the collection, so I just traced it and then made a cardstock back for it. So I'm going to get a feel for where I actually wanna install it. 
and I want to center it on the waterfall. So not on the page, but on the waterfall. That looks close, so I'm going to go with that. And this one already has tape on it. We'll use it. Now, if you feel like this is too fussy, you can just install it directly onto the designer paper. But keep in mind, you're going to have a one inch um, exposed hinge. So you may want to plan to cover it with some designer paper. Okay, there we go. Now we can go ahead and glue this all in and then we will locate the uh, magnet up here. That's going to hold everything intact. our waterfall and then we're going to locate magnet right there to start decorating. So let's go ahead and start. It's not as straight as I wanted it, but this is kind of a so I'm using two 12 by 12 collection packs, which is where this came from. And uh, that means you're going to have two of each of these. So there's, uh, I've got a front, and I've got a second one, which will be the back. And I'm gonna use this, the flip side on the back because it's gonna actually be turned upside down once it's installed, okay? Like so, okay? thing we're going to do here is um, because this is only eight inches wide from the eight inch collection pack we need to cover this area so I'm using this pattern from the 12 by 12 it's just stripes I'm going to color block it slightly and I just need to trim it to fit That should do it. Yes, it does. Take a little tiny bit off.
Now we're ready to decorate the waterfall. And this is fun. So these are from the 8x8 collection pack and I've repeated this process just because I'm using two packs of the of uh, the 8x8 and two packs of the 12x12. I've got some repeat patterns, so I'm gonna do the clock twice in this album. Once on page two and then again on page seven. So I'm going to install my clock. It's gonna be part of this waterfall and I think it's pretty cute. Okay, now we're going to start installing um, the strips that I cut. And you'll see they're cascading until we have a finished clock. There we go, isn't that fun? Okay, now I'm going to leave this part uh, undecorated, but I am going to add some decorative paper here. And so every other one of these is going to be decorated on the flip side, like so. These are from 8x8 collection pack. Everything on this page is from 8x8 with the exception of this strip and this cut apart.
There we go. So that is page two. And these uh, waterfalls are four by six, finished four by six. So it's a nice size for a photo. And I think it, the clock looks nicely framed between the two. I think it's kind of cool. So I am going to use this clock again on page seven. Um, and we'll do the same thing. It's going to be the same waterfall. Uh, it'll have, um, sorry, different designer paper around it, but it'll be the same clock. All right, that's it for page two. Thanks, everybody. Be back soon with page three.